We talk a lot about player skill in esports, and for good reason. Most of your favorite games give stars plenty of opportunity to show their supremacy. That was maybe the only chance, but Guardian comes back in. Oh, Guardian, he gets two. There's still more to go, though. Cowboy must plant the bomb. The peaks come in, but Guardian will not stop. One more to go, and Guardian gets them all. But games usually also include a certain degree of the unexpected, the uncontrollable, what we all know as RNG. It's going to actually trigger the Lincoln Sphere, but at the same time, Super and Fenrir, they can't run. It's back down to hell. Back up the Super, March another charge, hitting into Hal, Marvin puts him up on top of the cliffside, he's inside the rock face, Hal bashed again, 77%, oh, Hal is down, God. March, breaking the game! RNG stands for Random Number Generator, but the term has basically become shorthand for any randomized outcome in gaming. And so when someone complains about RNG, they're actually just complaining about luck. Humans have had plenty of reasons to generate random numbers for a while. 22, 22, come on, 22, yes! 22, Yay! 8, 15, 16, and 23 with the mega number 42. What would you do with it? Bunch of hookers and cocaine. Oh, okay, that's not I'm good. <laughs> we were hoping for a different answer. Sure, you can have someone just spouting off numbers randomly. 3370318. 82, 82. But people can have bias, conscious or not, towards certain numbers. No child of mine is ever going to be named Seven. All right, let's just stay calm here. Don't get all crazy on me. So over the course of civilization, tools like dice have been created for this purpose. But not even the numbers generated by dice are truly random. Dice are physically imperfect, and even if they weren't, they aren't a terribly efficient way to generate random numbers. And without going too deep into math, even numbers generated by computers aren't necessarily random. If the randomness comes from a set algorithm, the sequence can eventually repeat. The quest for truly erratic phenomena that could be used as a basis for random numbers led to the development of Ernie in the 1960s. Hi everybody, old Ernie here to tell you a little bit about the parts of the face. Not that Ernie, I'm talking about electronic random number indicator equipment. Whether it's particles of neon gas or atmospheric noise, truly random number generation uses a natural, unpredictable phenomenon to generate digits. Can I stop talking about math? I went into journalism because I can't do this shit. Wait, are you sleeping? So what does this have to do with gaming and esports? Well, the influence of RNG can be felt to varying degrees. There are games that make no use of it at all, those that incorporate it sparingly, and some that have fully embraced it as part of their identity. And incredibly, all three variations have managed to produce and maintain competitive esports scenes. But let's talk about the extreme ends of that spectrum first. In Rocket League, RNG, outside of spawn locations, plays zero role in how you experience the game, as it is entirely physics-based. And while luck might have some impact on how things pan out, that luck is never created outside the confines of the player's control. Similarly, Overwatch is a title that, so far, has chosen to avoid the lure of RNG mechanics with its hero and map designs. While esports purists might prefer to let skill and teamwork determine victory, the absence of RNG in these types of games can result in more predictable outcomes. On the opposing end of the RNG scale, we have the likes of Hearthstone, an esports title which has historically embraced it perhaps more than any other. The most famous example of this is Blizzard Entertainment's introduction of yogg Saron Hope's End, a card that casts a random spell for each spell you've already cast that game. All right, oh, whose hopes are, are ending we? here? No, it's and not a nice. bad start. It's okay. So it's up for swipe. Imagine if he gets intervenes. All right, and what else we got? So many animations. Stand against darkness. Wow, That's not going to save super. him. What? Soul of the forest. Bloodlust. Oh, okay. Charge all of them. Master what? portal. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh my <laughs> god. That was huge. That was absolutely huge. Now Monsanto has a gigantic board 
cleared all of Dude's major threats. Dude's, Dude's face says it all. While not all random effects in Hearthstone are as crazy as Yogg, cards like the humble babbling book generate effects that can be just as potent in the right situation. This could be huge Here we for go. Holy oh, oh, The perfect answer to the Maligos. This is going to blow Pavel, uh, Amnesiac, sorry, out of the water. Oh, look at it. Oh, my God. The heartbreak on the face from Amnesiac. I think he actually Whoa. pulled at his own hair a little bit there. He was so frustrated. Although the randomness of Hearthstone is undoubtedly a key part of its appeal, it can be off-putting to those placing more weight on purely skillful competition. So therein lies the challenge for game developers. How do you strike the balance between keeping your eSport feeling fresh for players and entertaining for spectators while maintaining skill-based competition? Over the years, Riot Games has attempted to walk this proverbial tightrope by implementing RNG into League of Legends with mechanics like auto-attack crit chance. Oh, what the fuck? Woo! That is crit him twice! And even in champion designs themselves, like Twisted Fate. But in 2016, they introduced more RNG to League with the addition of Elemental Drakes, which at the time drew division. Well, I think the random dragon is super bad for like competitive, especially competitive game. It's really not that bad because each of the dragons offers different strengths. It's just like you have to play a different way. Like if you get three infernal drakes, you can kind of just group as five and crush the other team. But if you have three cloud drakes, you have to be a bit more nuanced, maybe split push and rotate between the lanes. Like we could literally not show on the bottom side of the map and lose nothing but like 10 CS and a cloud dragon and we can get rift and top pressure for it. And yeah, I think it's really bad. Riot explained that the addition of RNG Drakes was an attempt at ensuring game-to-game -game variation and increasing the value of dragons as a strategic objective. Whether they succeeded or not remains up for debate. Even Valve has dabbled in RNG with both Dota 2 and CSGO. In Dota, most notably in mechanics like Ogre Magi's Multicast Ultimate, a passive that gives the two-headed mage the potential for insane burst damage. And in CSGO, with the random accuracy of your first bullet in a spray. Here I have four bots. My crosshair is directly on his head. All right, ready? Here we go. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Today, RNG continues to be relevant, and that can be seen with the rise of Battle Royales, an entire genre of games whose design is steeped in the concept of chance, from the weapon and item drops you discover to the randomly determined final battleground on the map. And how could we not mention hated mechanics like Crosshair Bloom in Fortnite? Fucking Bloom is fucking amazing! Even out of game, RNG remains inseparable from esports, especially with the continued growth of gambling, even if it's maybe not as random as sometimes portrayed. And you know what? I'm gonna bet for 20. I'll put 20 on green. Oh no. Oh my god, I just did an accidental green bet. Oh my god, I just did an accidental green bet. Oh my god! What the fuck? My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. It's easy to blame luck for things, and it leads some people to thinking that esports should have no RNG at all. But if the outcome of a game is too certain, as a spectator, it might not be very exciting to watch. As a casual player, it might not be very fun to play. Without just a touch of RNG, some of our favorite moments in esports might not have happened. Here he comes once again. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh, oh what? It's jumping double from cold. What is there going on right now? How does he do this? Cold has saved Luminosity with the all play. Unthinkable scenes there on the B apartments. So what is it about RNG that can make people so angry? One answer might be that people are generally bad at figuring out probabilities. So even though everyone should be affected equally by RNG over time, it feels like you get screwed more often. It's no wonder that gamers often give thanks to RNGesus when things go their way. 
Even one of the greatest Melee players of all time, Adam Armada Lindgren, felt RNGesus' blessing on occasion. Evident with the ridiculous amounts of bombs and stitch faces, his peach was sometimes able to draw. So yeah, the big, the big problem. Oh, oh God, no! Oh, come on. This game... Game really? What, what if he hits him with the move and it blows up on him? Yeah, no. Honestly, a lot of peaches right now will actually just throw away. Yeah. They don't see. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want to blow up themselves because it's a random chance, right? What well, if it's, you get hit? the explosion is big. Wait, it, what? It, if you're if you're Dro close enough, an to item. Be, oh, and, and 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 why why use a bomb up when you can use a stitch? Did he pull right? a stitch right after? Yeah. No, this he didn't. Cheating. No, he didn't. I, I, I don't believe it. I don't my believe it. Oh my God! Tell us who has it. Oh. He did too, but he's going for it. No, 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 fucking no, please, way. no, man. please, 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 no. no, oh my god, this is the anguish of a man who just saw Axe get stitch face six times that in one stupid. game. But that's not to say that RNG heavy games don't require skill, in fact, they challenge players to adapt to scenarios outside their control. Is that elemental Drake worth killing? Cut off the choke point, Kavi steps forward, takes a long- Oh, oh Zerzy gets it! Zerzy gets the dragon in the meantime! Is that first Punisher worth fighting over if it's the subpar Mortar Punisher? What are the chances that the Yog saron you played blasts your own face back into the Stone Age? Is he just gonna die by himself right Jansu now? Jansu is getting absolutely trolled by Yog saron right now. Discards his entire hand, then just draws. No! Oh, he keeps drawing cards! One more draw! He's just dead! He's dead! He's just dead! And what if you end up with a director who's actually a hack with no people skills? Just deal with it. Exactly. Wait. Talking about me? Not that. <laughs> Not that, Ernie. I'm talking about electronic random number indicator equipment. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Obviously, dude. How could you not know that shit? How could you not be one of the 4,500 people that watch this YouTube video already?